had the Suzuki Franks on test for about four weeks now as my holiday, one of my holiday test cars. But let's look at the Franks overall and give you my impressions on living with it now and not just on a usual test. What's interesting about the Franks is it's the Bellino platform, but in crossover form, can I call it that? And what I've come to the conclusion, having driven the car for a while, is that somehow, just by raising it slightly, the shape changes, they've given it so much more personality in my book and made it so much more livable with. Can't tell you what it is, can't really point it out, but I just really have enjoyed living with this car for the period. Now, this is a GL model, you get GLX. If you look at some of the previous videos I've posted over the last few weeks, you'll see all the differences between the two, so I'm not going to spend as much time on showing that. The black alloys, for example, as opposed to the polished alloys on the GLX is one of the big things. The lack of keyless entry and push button, little button there and push button start, those are differences between the two. But now, you know the coupe-esque, look to the crossover SUV, the much sharper drop to the rear of the car and the C pillar over there. But let's have a look at practicality now. Driver's seat is always set for myself, so let's have a look inside the back seat. Well, the door was a bit lower because you saw I knocked my hat as I got in, but there is very decent headroom for me. Legroom a plenty with the driver's seat set for me. Aircon vent and two USBs in the back seat. Now that's what you call family friendly and that's what I like and I must say it's quite a nice spacious sort of place to be. Good enough for family use as I said, small family, something like that. Certainly perfect in the crossover SUV category and that's what really counts. Come round to the boot, pop it open. I think I did the well, let's do the one body test again. Come on, just to show you for a change. Yep, definitely a one Allen boot. Very high load sill. So you saw I had to climb over to get in. But I mean, really, again, I'll live with it. I'll manage. But getting out is going to be a bit more of a challenge. But here we go. And of course, you know, you can drop the rear seats two thirds, one third to take a 305 litres up to about a thousand litres of space if you need it. Coming back to look inside the boot, lift up the board and you have got a full sized spare wheel which is a nice feature and I think I failed to mention 16 inch wheels on the car. Very neat look to it, of course it's got the light bar across the back that has become a requirement these days on all these sort of cars, all these sort of things are standard. Franks is powered by one, the very familiar Suzuki 1.5 litre four-cylinder petrol engine putting out 77 kilowatts, 130 newton meters of torque. You get between a four-speed auto or a five-speed manual driving the front wheels. And much as I prefer automatics nowadays, and much as I think they're better suited to town driving, in this case I'm going to tell you I prefer the manual. There's been so much said, written and discussed about the four-speed auto, about the higher revving, etc, etc. I just think this five-speed manual is so light, so easy, so comfortable and so relaxed to drive that I would live with it, honestly. Let's see it on the road, let's check it out inside. Hello, my name is Michael. I'm the owner of Change Cars and the host of the TV show All Things Motoring. I have one mission and that is to make a difference to the motoring public. Making a difference how? Making sure that you have safe options, making sure that you have knowledge. In that regard, it is my absolute pleasure and privilege to work with Alan Rosenmeyer of Motor Matters. The man with a hat, I'm the man with no hat. He's the man with the knowledge. Thank you for watching. Well, it's time to hit the open road in the Franks, our long-term holiday car, and it's actually our first opportunity for an open road motor matters road trip at Sunday, so why not? Cruising out, just been to Hearties, to our favorite spot over there, the Twisties. Let me tell you that this car may not be as direct handling as a Swift, 
but it does handle nicely. It's direct, it's easy, it's light, it's comfortable. It's all those things and it's a lot more spacious too. So you get all those features, all those combinations coming together. We've averaged on the open road just over 5 litres per 100. That's not bad at all, is it? Considering we were doing 6.3 around town. But you can see this is the GL model, so maybe it lacks a few of the niceties. It's only got a 7-inch screen as opposed to a 9-inch. The instrumentation is slightly different, but those are things that don't really matter. The 5-speed manual gearbox is light, easy, comfortable. The clutch is light. It's such an easy, light car to drive. It really, really is easy and light and whatever. And, of course, the question of GL versus GLX. My take? Six airbags as opposed to two would be my deciding factor but of course it's about money value for money and let me tell you this one at 288,000 rand in today's money in today's terms certainly comes into the equation as a really really good option so the screen has all the functions you want gives you everything you want it's very straightforward very easy you come down you've got climate control aircon or auto air conditioning which is a nice feature to have and then below you've got USB and a 12 volt now to tell you on the GLX you get a charging pad over there which you don't get on the GL single USB at the front but it works nicely and this car linked to Android Auto as quickly as any car has done really was easy useful nice and I enjoyed that tremendously You've got two cup holders over here. Your gear shift, as I told you, this five-speed manual is as light, easy, comfortable, relaxed as you could possibly want it. And the manual handbrake. Oh, well, I think we'll live with that. The dash itself, the different colors, different tones, well, some people comment on it, some don't. Again, I think it looks pretty funky. I quite like it. Another difference between the GL and GLX that somebody pointed out to me on one of my previous videos and this can be important to some and not to others is the fact that on the GLX you get height adjustment on the driver's seat which you don't get on the GL. Now maybe that's important to you it just depends obviously you want to get the optimum driving position. The most important two differences to me between GL and GLX is on this one on the screen you get a reverse camera on the GLX you get the overhead 360 camera. Again, do you want it? Do you need it? Up to you. But the crux of the whole story to me between the two models, this one has two airbags, the GLX has six. Now that's something that you know me, I will always, always say is something to look at very carefully and of great importance to me. But it's obviously about the budget. And what I mean the budget? Well, 288,000 Rand for a GL manual, add plus minus 35,000 Rand to get to 315,000 Rand for a GLX manual. I've told you the differences, mechanically identical. I know where I put my money, let me put it this way. But I can tell you that in the just on 300,000 Rand category, the Franks has to be a winner. And I think the public are proving that fact. You get the five-year, 200,000 kilometer warranty. You get a four-year, 60,000 kilometer service plan, all included in the price. You know what? It's no surprise to me the Franks is a semi-finalist in the SA Car of the Year for 2024. None whatsoever. If you're looking at this kind of category of car and you're looking at value for money, you have to check this one out. For Matters, I'm Eleanor. See you next time.